And now, direct from the Ducks Bar, <laughs> out at Blue Collarville, broadcasting through Blue Collar Media on podcast and live stream. It's time for the Ducks Shed Podcast. Get all the boys need a shed. G'day and welcome to the Shed Bar for the latest edition of the Duck Shed Podcast, broadcasting through Blue Collar Media here on podcast and live stream from the actual bar out here in Blue Collarville. Now, as you know by now, we have turned one of the Friday night shed sessions with mates around the bar, and it's growing every week into a podcast and live stream show. Now, you too can be a part of it just by commenting on the video or simply just by sending an email. To do that, just go to bluecollarmedia.com.au and click on contact, and we certainly do enjoy the feedback we get here and respond to all of those emails as well. Now, this week, my mate Wilco, who's sitting here, he is back for uh, another week to entertain us live from the bar. Our man, Reggie the Barman, is back to serve our beers, and uh, he's oh, yeah. dialed up, he's dialed oh, up yeah. tonight. He's got the 1943 dinner suit on and I've got to say it's come straight from the racket salvos this one and uh, he looks pretty good he's got to stop breaking into those clothes bins but anyway <laughs> he's got the suit on and we'll, we will be presenting Reggie shortly as well and I'll also be joined by sports journalist TV and radio presenter and all around good mate Erin Molan she'll be along for a few laughs as well so it's going to be a pretty big night and uh, and we'll see how we go but in the meantime when obviously Erin will join us a bit later because uh, she's currently on um, just finishing up on Channel 9 News tonight and uh, she'll uh, leave the radio, the television station rather pretty soon and, um, and head home and then we'll give her a call in about half an hour and see how she's going. And the good part about it is that it'll be the first time in a while that we've actually got to talk to Erin Sober. So that'll be good. So look forward to that. But in the meantime, Wilco, we can you're, fix you're that, back. Mate. You're back. I oh, made it and enjoying it. Yeah, love it up here, mate. Yeah, well, in the duck lot, shed. Well, a lot of people, well, mate. You've had a few big nights up here anyway, so I it's know. no, it's no real big deal. But uh, nothing you haven't done before. I'll just turn that speaker down. But um, but mate, how's your week been, pal? Week's been uh, a lot of nothing. Yeah, a lot of a lot of nothing. Yeah, well, it's about to get yeah. it's about to get big because uh, there's some announcements today, particularly where we live in New South Wales, that in another week or so the pubs are back for fifty people. Yeah. That's not bad, which is yep. five times more yep. than you got in your pub when you were there, as, as we established <laughs> that we established that come last on, week. Come on, mate. There's a couple Dicko. of times we got about fifteen in there. What about Dicko? <laughs> actually? I've got to say, I, I remember one night, the biggest night. There was when you had the mentals playing. Oh, it's huge! That was it? huge, and there was a, oh, there's Bluey. That's the um, Ed Bluey. That's the security, and um, and also HR manager through the day. He's doing some overtime. We <laughs> might just get Bluey. We can't let Bluey run around in the shed here because there are cables here running everywhere. So we'll just bang him on a lead. And lucky Courtney's here, and uh, and then we'll bring him in. He just wants to be part of the action. Oh, totally. As I should bring Jack up next oh, time. Oh, no, 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 no. Come no, on, that'd no, be no. great. Let me tell you now, Bluey, <laughs> oh, if you've got a blue catalogue out there, let us know. He's 12 years old. He still thinks he's 12 months old, and oh, yeah. uh, but he's very antisocial when it comes to other dogs. Really? He's good, he's good around people. Yeah. I well, mean, he's, if you he's, were to, if, he's a ripper. I mean, if you were to come here and there was no one home, he'd let you in, but you wouldn't get out. <laughs> um, he'd make sure he'd, he'd, uh, he'd, you know, hold you here and detain you. Yeah. But um, I've got to say, uh, he's a pretty good watchdog. But, mate, if he misses out on any sort of action... Oh, totally. Oh, mate, yeah. he's just filthy. Absolutely. Just absolutely filthy. Yeah, so, anyway... But same, with, same with Jack, mate. If uh, if I don't take him everywhere, yeah. he has the shits for me when I get home. Yeah, well, he's know? not here tonight, but it's a good thing yeah. because I reckon there'd be a drama. Oh, well, there'll be a drama when I get home because I'll be smelling the bluey. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you'll get home. Last week the, he didn't talk to me. You'll get home and the lounge will be ripped apart. And <laughs> That's right. <laughs> He's watching the podcast now. Is, is he? Yeah, oh, totally. <laughs> Jack's on the lounge there at home with a, yeah? you know, oh, totally. Actually, right. Dicko's watching tonight. Is he? Dicko, good yeah. on you, mate. And I made a lot of feedback from Dicko last week. So, well done, Dicko. It was, uh, yeah. it was great. And here's a couple of, uh, oh, 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 a good mate of mine He's just got a walked crowd. in. Dougie Peters, who's been threatening to come around here for a while. Young Dougie has turned up tonight, so uh, he's here, and his dad Josh, and uh, mate, straight to the fire they go, eh? And Archie, Archie's here as well, so we're right on the limit now. Is it still five people? I don't know. It's just, uh, it's not Reggie knows. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, Look in the is. meantime, what we'll do, we might yeah, just bring. It's five. What we might do is bring now. What we've done is last week. If you've been tuning into this regularly, as you know, last week we introduced our own barman because obviously we're pretty busy here. <laughs> in the shed, and what we did is we got our mate Reggie 
to dress up in a suit and get him on, right, to get, to get our drinks because we're blokes of class, oh, right? Totally. Aren't we? Really? Absolutely. <laughs> and I mean, we, we can't just have riffraff here in the shed getting the beers out. So we made Reggie dress up. Well, he's made, we had a lot of feedback through the week. of Everyone was right. stoked with the fact that you were here when we were playing live music and the fact that Reggie was here as the barman. Oh. So what we'll do is, look at this, he's putting more beers in the fridge. You are the man, Reggie. So what we'll do in a minute, we'll get Reggie to come out and we'll just show you how we've dressed him today. Um, we made him go down and basically he's been stalking, you know those clothes bins oh, in yeah. the car parks? Yeah. I yeah. thought he slept in a couple of those, you know. Tuesday and Wednesday night. Well, he's certainly <laughs> sleeping in the clothes that he's knocking off from down there. <laughs> but what we'll do, we'll just bring Reggie here. There, this, we've, now, we've all, already got Reggie's own intro. Here it is. Okay, Reggie. <laughs> here he is now. What about the yellow tie? Oh. Now, just wave. The camera's there, Reggie. All right, that's a computer. So just wave. So just toggle social distancing. I'll move a bit. So there he is, our very own Andy Cap, Reggie the barman, who's doing a fantastic right. job. Righto, Reggie, move on. <laughs> that, that's enough for you. Out you go. So there you go. And uh, so we've got to basically fill half. Reggie, you've had your say. Oh, mate, move on. I'll get the dog onto you. So um, he's probably already had a go at your leg anyway. So anyway, uh, but in the meantime, if you've got a... Um, if you do have a, 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 a question or any comments, you can shoot them through to us because we've got to kill half an hour before we can get Aaron uh, to join us. In the meantime as well, um, it'll be, we'll go play a couple of songs for us, which will be mm. good. We'll go. you got, he, he's warming up a bit earlier, and mm. uh, how did you go with the warm-up? Pretty bad. Because yeah, pretty bad. <laughs> we're in the shit then because a lot of the times, a lot of time is that when we do the warm-up, yeah. that's normally some of your best stuff. That's right, actually. You always got to press record, don't you? Always got to be recording. You just never know when the good stuff's going to come out. I've got an old mate of mine just... Uh, mate, an old mate of mine, Brucey Floyd's tuned in here. Good on you, Floydy. I'll have to give you a call, mate. And uh, what is, I knew you could talk underwater with a mouth full of set concrete. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. But anyway, that's why I work on radio now. Floydy, you taught me how to speak. I used to work with Floydy in the old days. Good bloke. Mate, I could, you can talk. You can you well, can well, let it go, it. can't you? You're you want to hope so, mate. I mean, I work on a radio. We got another twenty five minutes to go. So yeah, Jesus. Got to go. No, no, you'll be doing a lot of songs. <laughs> and I, I can, yeah. So basically, uh, Donna Bergs has uh, also commented. G'day, Reggie. Hello, Donna. And mate, of course, James Glenn Denning's already sent six messages, oh. which is fantastic. Uh, <laughs> hey, James. Yeah. So anyway, all very very good. Timmy, the trivia man. Oh yeah. Your mate. Yeah, he's a legend. What about Timmy? I mean, he's... fair dig could bore for Australia if it was Olympic sport. Oh. He would get. He would. Be on the podium for gold, silver, bronze. You reckon? All Jimmy. three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mate, a, mate, I just, yeah. I just want to know how he, um, who writes the questions for him. Well, mate, I said to him one day, "Geez, you must have to be full of knowledge. You've, you've been doing this trivia for what a decade or, or more, Timmy." And I said, "You must know a lot." And he said, "No, I don't retain any of it." Yeah, no, so you, what, you don't. You, well, no, you know what? I've got to say, he's a great bloke, Timmy, and F- um, fabulous bloke. And it's good to see that he's joined us on here. I've got yeah. to say, I mean, in regards to trivia, you know, the Walkabout Creek Hotel. Yes. Right out of Crocodile Nun. He's a good mate Absolutely. of mine, Frank, who owns that pub. And um, mm. I've got to tell you that um, he has trivia nights, right? Mm. But what he does, he gets the questions from inside the Forex bottle caps oh. and inside the inside the bushels tea bags as, a, as little trivia questions. Right. And then he sells answers for five bucks. <laughs> right. Not necessarily the right answers, <laughs> but he does sell answers for five dollars. So anyway, that's pretty good. But um, you've no. got to make a buck anywhere in a pub these days. If, that, if you can get fiver out of that, that's a that's not too bad. Yeah, no, absolutely, mate. And you've got a lot of fan, you've got a lot of fans um, tuning in here. David Huxley, who must be a mate of yours. Hey, Wilco, Thompson, Michelle. Oh you know, yeah, they're, 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 they're up in yeah they're up in the entrance. I think social yeah, distancing. No. I hope Tomo, Dave. Yeah, good yep. stuff. Uh, Dave, good Don't on you. Sit, sitting there watching it with his 18-year-old Jack Russell. We love that. Vic Widman. Hi, Duck. Yes, hi, Vic. And uh, for those of you that listen to us on the radio, we'll know Vic Widman. As, uh, and Vic, Vic and I do another podcast called Road Trips Australia. It's oh, all about, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we do that. But he also joins me on the radio each week. We're on 181 radio stations now, and we're about to increase that. So Wow, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, which is a good thing. And um, and Vic is a big part of that. So good on you, Vic. Good to see you've got nothing on tonight. And obviously his sock drawer's in perfect condition. Oh, it'd have to be. Because he'd normally have to, re- he'd normally have to be, you know, 
just rearranging his sock drawer. Yeah. He gets pretty busy, Vic. He wears those Does sock he? savers. You know the old brick carters used sock to wear? Sock savers. Yeah, they're like, they're like these like material with elastic around them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he puts them on and they go over his boots. Oh, mate. I mean, fair dinkum. Really? He looks like a complete imbecile <laughs> with them on. So, Vic, good on you, mate. Good to see that you've tuned in. And, uh, and well done. So uh, we're yeah, very happy you. with that. Read about Reggie. He's all straight over there on the fire. He's taking charge of that. Yeah. No, and, he's going um, it was a little bit cool here earlier. It was snowing up the mountains today, which was... Well, yeah, absolutely. Bathurst, Katoomba, though, it was uh, got a bit of coverage there. It's going to be a big snow season. You're not allowed to go, I don't think. Yeah, well, it's normally pretty cold here once that happens. And uh, and it hasn't... Uh, it's, but it's not that bad tonight, although I do have the beanie on and, and everything else. I know. Have you got the Ugg boots on tonight? Yeah. Oh, they're on, yeah. Oh, the yeah, Oak boots yeah, are on, yeah, yeah. Good on you, mate. And yeah. uh, good day to June. Good to see Barry Turtle. Turtle Nurseries is the fire. Would you see the firewood we're burning here? Yeah. Right? Comes from turtles. Mate, I'm telling you now, if you want firewood, 962 I even know the number off the top of my head. Give him a call. Turtle Landscape Supply. He's got the best firewood oh, in yeah. Australia. Yeah. Unbelievable. And he delivers. He's got about 150 trucks. Right? Maybe not that many, but you know he's named a truck after me. Really? Yeah, look, he's got, like, he names his trucks. You seen the yellow tippers yeah, running yeah, around, yeah. turtles? Yeah. So, uh, so he's got Barney and then Rubble. Yeah. And Fred, <laughs> right. Wilmot, like, and all, you know, and, you know, Kath and Kim, all these. Yeah. Well, he's got one, the duck. So what we can do, we can, we, what we'll do. That's bloody brilliant. So what we can do, we could actually get Turtle, the firewood king. We could get him, and also the nursery king. I bought some fruit trees off him the other day. Mm. But I'm, I'm going on a health kick. So <laughs> by the time the trees grow, I'll be dead. But anyway, so... But we could get him to have name a new truck, Reggie the Barman. Reggie re- the Barman. Reggie the Barman. Oh, that's perfect. Uh, Reggie loves this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, Reggie. Look at him, on a kick. Reggie, you're supposed to be serving the beers, not drinking them. <laughs> Anyway, what we should do is uh, we might get you to play a bit of a song for us. And yeah, as we said, sure. um, we have, well, just turn Reggie off. Uh, what, um, as I said, we've got Aaron Molan joining us soon. And I've uh, worked with Aaron uh, at the radio station, obviously. Um, yeah. She's a great person and, good, and, a, yeah. and a good mate. And uh, and I rang her this afternoon because we had a few other plans and things have, have changed and things change around all the time in this sort of caper. And I rang Aaron. I said, Aaron, can you... Come on tonight. And she was, oh, but she was straight yeah, up for it. Yeah, fantastic, you know? hey? Yeah, but she's obviously had to work on the uh, Channel 9 News tonight and uh, She wouldn't let that go to, to get in early? No, no. And I've oh. got to say to her, and we'll be asking oh. you this as well, this will be the highlight of Erin's career. Oh, totally. I mean, like, it yeah. doesn't get much better than this. Nah. I mean, we've had some big names in entertainment join mm. us so far, mm. and a few coming as well. There's a bit of interest there, and I've, had a, I've received the odd messages and message and, and um, email off a couple of people saying, Doug, how do we get on? So uh, I'll get in the line, boys. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll do that and, uh, and we'll... Mate, I'm uh, privileged to be here two weeks in a row. No, no, well, you're, you're here anyway because the whole concept of this idea was the fact that while we were in lockdown, that's a bit easing off a bit now, Yeah. was, because you know yourself and we've got my mate Josh here tonight, Josh yeah. Peters. Yeah. If you need an x-ray, we can plug his business as well. Really? Um, he's in the x-ray and scan business. Ah. I had to go down for a brain scan. He charged me a search fee <laughs> a while back. <laughs> so anyway, so we used to, we sit here and drink piss anyway Yeah, that's on a right. Friday night or a Saturday night totally. or a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever yeah. night it is. It doesn't matter. So we thought, well, mate, I couldn't go anywhere. And no one could come around because we all got told to stay home. Yeah. So I thought, well, why don't we just turn this on and... People can just, everyone can come here. So oh, it's bloody brilliant. There you go. So anyway. I want to have Tomo and, and Dave Huxley and Jonesy up there in the entrance. They're probably on about carton number two by oh, now. I've, if I know I've them well. I'm a big fan of the entrance. How good. Oh. Benny Foster, a good mate of mine up in Brisbane. He's watching as well. Lovely. Yeah, very good. And uh, good on you, Benny. He's a, a good young fella up there. He, his dad, Sniff's one of my great mates. What's his name? Sniff. Jeez, I don't know if I should ask why he got. Everyone's that, mate. got a nickname, mate. Right, one of the great, one of the greats of the transport industry, Steve Foster. Right. Yeah, yeah, Sniff, that's his nickname. But um, right. Benny's his young bloke, so I got on you, Benny. Well, mate, I reckon what you need to do is uh, maybe play a tune. You got something for us? I got to, uh, not really, but I'll just see what comes. You make out. it up, and uh, yeah, mate, I got the up. harmonicas here again tonight as well. Bloody brilliant, mate. Well, last week we produced, mate. What about I got a message from Adam Harvey? Yeah, and um, who you know, is a, he's been on here as a mate yeah. of mine. And remember I mentioned last week that the, the, the harmonicas had been in the console of the four-wheel drive yeah. for like two years. Yeah. So he sent me a message, put the harmonicas back in the console. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Adam. You're a good man. Good on you, mate. Anyway, I thought it sounded great last week. Anyway, just on that too, Adam, Adam and I are about to start a new recording tomorrow. 
a new yeah, uh, program called uh, Country Picks. Looks good. With uh, Adam Harvey and myself, and there'll be feature interviews yep. with, um, you know, country artists that you know, some up and upcomers as well, country Bloody news. Bloody brilliant. Uh, some, we'll pull some classics out as well, play some songs. Great we'll probably stuff. go for around about 40, 45 minutes. And uh, so if you're into your country music, look out for that one, Country Picks, and you can get everything we do the easiest way to get everything on podcast what we do. And you notice now everyone's doing podcasts. Yeah. I mean, that's the business yeah. we've been in for a long time. I mean, yeah. we've been podcasting the radio show for about six years. Yeah. And then other podcasts. But now everyone's doing them. Look, really, They're it's, everywhere. It's, a, it's a fabulous sort of setup, really. I tune into a couple of um, podcasts from Texas. A lot of blues bands I like over there. It's yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, Love no, it. they are good. So anyway, if you like your, con- like your country music... Mm. Say that three times uh, quickly. Uh, mate, jump onto that one. Nah. Uh, country Picks with Adam Harvey and the Duck. We'll probably publish the first one oh, tomorrow night. We've got a recording yeah, day right. here tomorrow so Adam in the com- studio. He comes in. He's, and yeah, Adam's coming down here tomorrow and uh, we'll be uh, in the studio and we'll do that. We've got some keep great that- guests already lined up for our feature interviews in coming weeks. Graham nice. Connors and McClymonts yep. and, and, a, and a few others, but it's been pretty well received, so... And, uh, and Foxtel, I noticed now, have chopped CMC. Which, so if you're a country music fan, that's a bit of a it's shame. It's terrible. Yeah, Channel yeah. V as well. Yeah. Uh, all the music you know, channels. A lot of people, I reckon there's a lot of jobs gone just in that. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a crying shame. Yeah, But absolutely. you'll fill the void. Country, oh, I'm country not sure picks <laughs> will fill the void. <laughs> I'm not sure whether we'll fill the void, but anyway. Uh, Matthew Summerall, one of the great blokes. Now, listen, Matt Summerall's a mate of mine. Yeah. Now, listen, I'll just tell you who he is, right? Now, everyone on this who watches us each week... This is who Matt Summer released. So we'll just play our intro from the start of the what we play when we start the show. And now, direct That's from Matt the Summerall. Bar. That's him. <laughs> Out of Blue Collar Bell. Good on you, Matt. Casting through Blue Collar Media. Got the voice, hasn't he? Oh, he podcast sounds fantastic. And live stream. It's time for the Ducks Shed Podcast. How good's his voice? Good oh, on you, Matt. So there you go. There's a plug. Some media. If you want some voiceover work, get on to him. He's I'll a good player. You, Matt, you've got a future there, mate. Yeah, no, that's right. And oh. the best part about it is I don't pay. Oh, perfect. Yeah, well, really, I, just got, I mean, I just ring you and say, mate, can you do this oh, for me? This is great. Yeah, so uh, he's a good bloke, and we worked together for a long time, Matt and I, and yep. uh, at the radio station at 2GB, and uh, he's he, um, has moved on to set up his own thing, some yeah, media, yep. and uh, we set up Blue Collar Media, and we've sort of worked along together. You've got to do that in this business. Yeah, look, I'm still know? I'm still thinking about Adam Harvey turning up here tomorrow. I'd, just, I'd hide the keys for the fridge. i get Reggie to lock that. As soon as he leaves tonight. Yeah, no, no, I'm Padlock. across it. Yeah. No, don't worry, I'm across it. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, and Matt, just by the way, I know you've been talking to Tui's on our behalf. If you can just get on to that, Matt, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, why don't you give us something? Friday night here in the shed. Well, you, you go... You, yeah, no, you, you just... So I'll, week, just, right? I'll just turn you off while you get yourself yeah, yeah. ready. So I'll turn you off there. Yeah. Right, so you're off there. That's all good. I'll just put that there like that, mate. And I'll turn your other mic on. Okay, you're into it. So here he is. For all you Dave Wilkins fans, he's played with them all. Russell Crowe, Chris Christopherson, he's Willie Nelson. He's into it. He's got the voice. Here he is, Dave Wilkins. Friday night in the shed. How good is it? Oh, it's brilliant. Cigarettes to the black market man. I had the Vietnam cold turkey from the ocean to the silver city, and it's only all the vets could understand about the long forgotten dark side guarantees. How there were no V Day heroes in 1973, and how we sailed in the Sydney Harbor. Her an old friend, but I couldn't kiss her. She was lying, and I was home to the lucky land. She was like so many more from that time on. Lives were all so empty till they found their chosen one. And they had legs were up and open, their minds were always closed. We're hounding fast suburban chains And the legal pads were yellow I was long pay packets lean The telex riders clattered where The gunships once had been The car punks make me jump in And I never stop the dreams The growing need for speed and no Drove me round the bend And I'm traveling 
have gone off the neighbours have oh, gone off the neighbours, hey, the neighbours hey what about the neighbours hanging over the over the fence trying to get a view I'm just saying you can talk on that one yeah, for me because I reckon you've got another one in you now you said to me before we started yeah what the we haven't prepared oh, you, right. you said how are we going to get to 7.30 We're going to, what are we going to do for <laughs> half an hour I said well you'll be playing a lot of songs <laughs> mate we've got eight minutes to go until really? we have to ring Aaron I mean mate, that's what I've told you just leave it to me mate oh, I mean I, did. Leave it to me, <laughs> I mean I dribble shit for a living <laughs> So there you go. Anyway, oh good. Yeah, we get some of that cheap wood into that thing there, mate. We've got we get turtles. Good stuff in there shortly. Uh, Reggie, mm-hmm. get that fire going, mate. So, uh, but anyway, but um, mate, Are look, Reggie making the fire, getting the beers. Oh well, mate, he, well, mate, please. I mean, he's got. We've given him how many cheese and jets have you had? <laughs> jets and biscuits and cheese. <laughs> He's probably no, right. no, no bullshit. You've had none. No matter you're into then. You've got the gherkins going over there as well. Share them with the boys too, uh, uh, Reggie. He's doing a great job. Now, Reggie turned up in the suit last week. This one he's not on tonight has come straight off the rack at Salvo's, which is totally. fantastic. Suit and, uh, mate, oh, on, on it's I'll t- $4.50. Yeah, do they make them for, you know, I mean, that'd be great. I mean, obviously, you've pl- well, you've got, the, how much was it? $2.50? $4.50. $4.50. Oh, Four hundred and fifty. What about it's got the satin look to it as well, the shine. Like it's the old dinner suit. Four dollars fifty. I understand that concept, Reggie. I was having a joke, but anyway, all very good. So we've made him put a yellow tie on. So. He's looking like a bit of a tiger. And here, I'll just say, I'll just say, people, if you just tuned in, here's Reggie's intro. Oh yes, Reggie. And uh, unfortunately, you can't see what's going on in front of me here, but we've got a ray. A fair old fire happening, and um, a couple of the boys sitting around the fire, and Reggie getting their beers. Have we got any what? Yeah, no. Anyway, you can feel it coming in here actually. So anyway, but we can't spin that camera around and show you what's ha- what's happening sort of on the other side of that camera. But just to give you a bit of a picture, we do have a um, we do have a fire going, and a couple of the boys sitting, and Reggie just waiting on them, and he's Reggie. Oh, well done, Reggie. You know, that was turn Reggie off, so Reggie, was, uh, he's our man. And we'll introduce Reggie to Aaron Molan as well. Now, look, before we get on to, um, before we get on to uh, Aaron, and we'll call Aaron soon, I reckon you got another song in you or not? Yeah, yeah. Let's go, mate, let's yeah. go. This is one of mine. I think I wrote this one with Diesel about a few years ago. Oh, so drop, you can drop a name, pal. Oh, totally. <laughs> hey, Mark, put it on your next album, will you, uh, mate? Come on. Yeah, you got your Diesel. hours and 15 days since I woke up from inside that haze no one's gonna tell you what you got to do why he'll get you through Walk a million hours for fresh shoes on your feet be a man of the sun and baby and street You can look at life Like it's all brand new Whatever gets you through Hey baby No more maybes When this world Gets you down Come around Won't you come around I heard that 
she died Found this world just a little, little Go the neighbours again. How good is it? And uh, my mate Lawrence next door, he's on the, he's on here. He's actually watching it over the fence and on his phone at the same time. <laughs> so good on you, Lawrence. Plenty of people are sending Lawrence. some comments through. We'll have a look at some of those, and I'll just get. Benny's a bit of a pain. John Redmond, bravo. Good on you, bravo. He's he's tuned in, and uh, it's going to be a good one. Alison Dawson, good friend of you, Wells Wilco. Must be go Wilco, loving it. Oh, uh, Donna Berg again, sweet lyrics, Dave. Uh, Darren down in Melbourne is watching as well. And my mate Feral Dave, he's watching. And Feral it's the different Dave. Dave. Right. Feral Dave up in Brisbane, yep. he's tuned in as well. So good on you, uh, Feral. We can flick for a few comments. Don't forget, if you've got any requests as well, we can put look, we can put you on the spot here. Oh, you what about you said you wrote the song with Diesel? You've written some songs with a few big names, haven't you? And worked yeah. with a lot of the big guns. Yeah, a couple. I wish Mark would put that on his new rac- record. Hang on, have I got you turned up? I've got you on the thing, so you're not on the headsets. Yeah, that's why. Right. So we can hear you. That's all right. You got me? Yeah, yeah, we got you. So that's okay. And yeah. um, what about Richard? Thanks, mate. He's one of our regulars. Don't take the beanie off again, duck. Near blinded me with your glow. Oh. Anyway. Geez, anyway. Hey, is Darren up there with, in his pub? Hey. Eh? Darren. Coxie? Coxie. Oh, mate, well, Coxie's just texted me. Can you give me a plug? Coxie. Well, he's got oh. the BOMO Tavern up there. Mate, timing's everything. Yeah. And um, I can tell yeah. you now that he's up there, and he's got a, he's got an old mate of mine I used to work with, Sean Smith. We nicknamed him Berrigan because his name was Sean. Remember Sean Berrigan, the football yeah, player? Yeah, yeah, Right, yeah, like he yeah. played for the Broncos. Yeah. So we, I nicknamed him. I've given out a few nicknames in my day. Penguin, g'day, if you're watching. Mm. <laughs> I can't go into details on the no. Penguin nickname, but... Uh, <laughs> But Berrigan and uh, and Coxie up there at the Bomo Tavern. Yep, social distancing. Bo- of Although, of course, they would yeah, be so. Well, oh, mate, they, yeah. no, let me tell you now, they've been social distancing for years. Right. Because, mate, no one wants to go near them. <laughs> I mean, fair <laughs> dinkum. I can only tell you now, when the kids knock on Coxie's door at Halloween, they go, oh, fuck, and give him lollies. Really? Oh, mate, he's got a head, mate. I'm telling you now. He's got oh, a he's head. A he's got no, oh, mate. Fair yeah. him. If his head was on a stamp, no one lick the back of it. So there you go, Coxie. There's your little payout. But the boys are up there at the Bomo Tavern. What about last week when I was telling you about the Bomo Tavern? Yeah. And you thought it was a I real tavern. Was, I thought it was a pub up the road. Well, somewhere. the pubs have been closed for months, and yeah. you think there's one a new one opened up at Bowen Mountain? Hey, mate, can I tell you just a sneaky little story from last? Yeah, talking night? to your mic. Yeah, sneaky little story from last night. I I went to an undisclosed place where the hotel was. Supposed to be shut. Take your own towel, did you? Yeah. It wasn't Kens or Kensington. The, remember the remember the that keg, joint? The keg was going. It was tap beer last night, so I, uh, I had about ten of them, unfortunately. Yeah. It tasted that good. Yeah. Oh. I thought you looked a bit dusty Ooh. tonight. I noticed you've... Yeah. yeah. It's a bit dusty. I, I, I didn't say anything when I first yeah. came, did I? I mean, and Reggie, obviously, he's dusty as as uh, as usual, which is good. But... Um, no, yeah. all, all very good. That's all right. We won't exclude, uh, oh, reveal what that was. We won't reveal, but... I no, no, fair you. enough. I can tell you, mate, when the pubs open next, what is it, the 1st of June? Yeah. I'll be there for that that icy cold schooner for sure. Yeah. Now, look, I've got to, you remember, you know my mate Mark Levy? Yeah. From radio. Yeah, oh, mate, yeah. and a big congratulations to Mark Levy because Levy is a good mate of mine. Me and Levy have been yeah, real good, really good mates from, for, oh, shit, I started at 2GB, I think 2008. We, we hit right. it off straight away. And uh, before we started to do the split screens and camera angles here, uh, Levy came on this on the yeah, phone right. anyway, 
Anyway, so Levy is, um, has got a big job. He starts doing the drive shift in Brisbane uh, yeah, and Sydney next right. week, which will be good yeah. on you, Levy, and uh, he'll kill it because he's, he's just he's all over that stuff. No, he's he's one, <laughs> Levy, one thing about Levy, I will say, He's not a fence sitter. So if, you, if oh, you're no. in Brisbane, 4BC <laughs> or in not Sydney, 2GB, 3 o'clock, turn him on. It's going to be a bit of fun. He does a great job with Wide World Sports. You're talking yeah, to that right. mic, mate. I'll put the headsets on. You want to put them back on yeah, and sure. I'll turn your other mic off. So All we'll right. do that. And uh, that's your guitar mic. We might play one more song before we get Aaron because we just want to make sure that um, we'll turn that one off, turn you back on there. So you're sweet. You're good? Yeah, good to go there. That's, that's it. Great. That's a lot better. So um, the good thing with Levy, he's not a fence sitter. Not at all, mate. Oh, Not he, at all. He has an opinion. He lets you know about it. So, well done. So, if you're into that and um, and you're a fan of Levy, he does a good job on the footy on the weekend. But the reason I brought up Levy is because remember when you had the pub, we put him in the honeymoon suite? Oh, yeah. By himself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's a good sport, though, isn't he? He's oh, a he's real a good sport. Bloke. So we yeah. put Levy in the honeymoon suite at the pub <laughs> yeah. by himself. It was funny. Levy and I did a show on 2GB there for a while called Outdoor Adventures. And I'd say, this is, and Levy said to me, I can't believe you've picked me to come on this show with you, Duck. I've never had an indoor adventure. <laughs> so anyway, no, but he's a good bloke and a good mate. And uh, he's a good friend of our families here. So yeah, he's a good cracker. Yeah, he's a top bloke, Levy. So good luck for next week, Levy. Why don't you do one more song? And then what, what we're going to have to do is very shortly get Courtney, my daughter, who's mm. basically our executive producer does a great job and a studio producer well look I've got to tell you now there are two people this would not happen without mm. one is Courtney my daughter the other one is is my mate Sean Walker from New Life Media oh, New Life if you want to get any filming done get on to him yeah. he logs in and sorts out our um our, our uh, all our gear here before we come on and then Courtney makes sure it all happens yeah. so I've got to tell you now this might be a surprise but I'm as dumb as dog shit eh <laughs> Don't know what to say there. Well, may just say yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> what a loaded question. Well, mate, everyone has their job. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I mean, I'm just not sure what mine is yet. But anyway, even the dog's got a job. I mean, you know. didn't thank Blackie though. No, Blackie will be on shortly because she'll want to say hello to Aaron because her right. and Aaron are mate. So, right. we'll get Blackie on. So, we'll get Blackie on here shortly to right. say hello to Aaron when we ring her. But uh, you play a song, and then we'll get Courtney to come around and give Erin a call on because she's got to do it around here through the uh, computer. So in the yeah. meantime, you might want to just take those yeah. off and we'll put your other microphone back on. And, uh, mate, how good am I going? It's amazing how good it's you go at this when, you, when you're sober. <laughs> <laughs> well, last week when you got I think you'd had a couple of hours head start, didn't you? Anyway, anyway oh, mate, please. <laughs> well, mate, just talk into that mic if you before you talk. Okay, so yeah, here's yeah. Wilco. He's going to do another tune for us. If you've got any requests, make sure you uh, send them in. We'll put him on, put some pressure on him, and we might even get Aaron. I reckon because we'll, apparently Aaron's a very good singer. Really? <laughs> anyway, we'll get her on to that. Anyway, we'll see. She might be able to do a sing along with you, mate. But anyway, oh, give yes. us one before we go that we call Aaron up. Someone turn the light up on the stage. Now I find that I am respectable Somebody once told me At my age to Get a job and myself be sensible So I sat upon the beach And watched the waves roll to the shore I lay my head on the sandy bed Sitting low Strawberry wine and let me lay down in the sweet sunshine. Ooh, kiss those lips so divine and tell the world I'm doing fine. Someone said the world is gonna fall, said the writing's up there on the wall. Sell my soul no more. I won't be hanging here anymore. Anymore. I was talking to an angel. She said everything's just fine. You can laze away on a sunny day. Drinking love is on moonshine. Oh, and pass me a strawberry. Let me lay down in the sweet sun of shine. Ooh, kiss those lips so divine. I tell the world that I'm doing fine. Ooh, pass me strawberry wine. Let me lay down in the sweet sun shine. Kiss those lips so divine 
Cherry here. What about Dougie? Dougie Peters is over there. He's my man, Dougie, and his brother, Archie. And, and, and Vic, just so you know, Vic Widman, we have spoken to uh, Vic about sending Archie down there for a four-wheel drive training thing at his um, driver training centre oh, at Braidwood. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. a real person, Vic. He's on the other side of the camera sitting by the fire. OK, I've got my daughter, Courtney, here. Who's the Trump? So she has to log in, and I'll just turn that mic off, mate. So you want yeah, to uh, get, your, get your headsets back on. And we'll do that. And, uh, OK, give Erin a call on FaceTime. And she just texted me, said, I'm ready. Here we go. So let's just see what happens here. We're ringing Erin. And probably people see that, what it says. Here she is. Aha! There she is. The great Erin. How are you? Hi. Uh, oh, is that Eliza over there? How's she going? Are you saying hello? Come on. Oh, hold her. Oh, how good is she going? What about? Is that hello? There she is. Look at that. Hello, Eliza. Hello. Wave to the camera, Wilco. So, Say hi, Doc. There she is. <laughs> now, Aaron, you didn't have to get your hair done for tonight's performance. I mean, it looks sensational. <laughs> I assure you, I didn't make a special effort, my friend. I've just come from news. Are we on, by the way? Yeah, now? yeah, we're on live. Yeah, we've been playing. We've got live, as you can see. As you can probably <laughs> see, Erin, we have a... I can't um, see your head, darling. I can just see the left earphone. No, no, no. no. Oh, really? I don't know why. Yeah. I, we can see you clearly, which means people can see you. Well, people that's can the see most you. important part. Yeah, that's right. They can see exactly right. <laughs> and uh, it's good to see cheers, you. Darling. Oh, cheers. yes, cheers. Hold the wine. Well, cheers. Hold your beer up. Erin's just... Uh, yeah. Good on the wine. And we were talking about your drinking habits a bit earlier, Erin, which is... Um, Thank you. That's for you. Um, it's good. To, uh, mate, thanks for doing this too, coming on. What do you... Absolute, absolute pleasure. I think so highly of you. You're a bloody legend. Hey, so, listen. Ah, I know. And I'll, and just send me the clothes. send me the invoice, Erin, for that as well. <laughs> I was about to say, just like Big Man, I will be charging my Yes, I know. I do know. Oh, mate. Let me tell you. Now, I, I was known as the king of rorters. And if that was true, you're my queen. Because you are the best in the, you're the best in the business. Oh, stop it, stop it. <laughs> look, look, I go okay, duck. I go okay. Yeah, I know they, you do. They, they, they unfairly represent me. Let me tell you that. Yeah, that's good. Is that Sean in the background? I can hear. Yeah, that's Sean calling out to Eliza because she's having some jelly for dessert, but she calls it ice cream, so she yep. thinks she's having ice cream, but it's actually careful a healthy version. Yeah, that's healthy. all right. Yeah, oh, mate, I, don't, I mean, I grew up in the so West. what's happening? Oh, not much. You talk about that. I grew up in the West, Aaron, when we used to eat Devon, and everyone thought it was ham because that's what we were told. Get into this league, ham. How good is it? <laughs> so what do you think of the shed, Aaron? This is the shed. Can you see the shed in the background? Can you see the... I can. I like it a lot. Yeah, um, well, mate. It's, it's very nostalgic. It's like a like an old pub. In I lived in Ireland for a year back in the day. Well, I reckon I would have been about 21. And there was full, this little town I lived in called Drogheda, which is about an hour south of Dublin. And it was mm. full of pubs that looked exactly like that. Just like tin sheds with kind of memorabilia up in the background and mm. yeah, neck level. I love that um, that wine glass slash bottle there. Oh, the you know what? How good oh, is it? You know what? That, we up. can actually get that engraved with your name and send it to you because you just fill it up and just keep drinking it out of the bottle. <laughs> I'm not really a wine. <laughs> my now, kind of glass. <laughs> now, listen, say good day to me, mate, Wilco. He's one of the great entertainers. He's played with just about everybody. He can, name, he can drop a name. He just played some songs. Hey, he said, Wilkin. oh. Wilkin, is it? Wilco. Hey, Aaron, how are you doing? How are you, Wilco? I'm absolutely fabulous. Yeah. Been sitting here with a duck having a couple of coldies. Yeah, we've got our own barman here, Aaron. You want to meet oh. him? We'll just, yeah, we've yeah. got our own barman. Yeah. Just get around now. We've got his, we've got his own theme song for yeah. the barman Check as well, out. Aaron. Right, where'd you come, mate? <laughs> okay, Hi, off, Bob, off you get, off you get, charge, off Bob. you get, Reggie. <laughs> oh no, don't, don't worry about that. He, not only that, he's the, uh, he's got the limo out the front. The dad's a one twenty Y. So, Aaron, thanks. Oh, there's Eliza. Oh, how much has she grown? Seriously, you'll see me look to the side a bit because obviously the camera's there. Really too. It's amazing. She's grown. A nice lock of a nice uh, lock of hair there too. How good she going? I oh, remember. Yeah, she, remem loves, she loves a mirror and loves her reflection. Yeah, and I remember. Hang on, we'll just. Uh, I'll just change the uh, the scene here so people can, we can have a good look at her. So we'll just do that now. And there she is. Oh, how good is she? Can you say hello? Say hello. hello. Oh, hello. how good is she going? Hello. Hi. You say hi, duck. Hi, duck. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> how good is it? <laughs> hi, duck. <laughs> oh, how good is she going? Uh. What noise does a duck make? 
Quack, quack, quack. <laughs> Make a lot of other noises as well, Aaron. Just ask Blackie. Don't you just? Not all of them appropriate. Oh, I've got to I say, know. I remember when when um when you first announced that you were, you were pregnant with Eliza, and I used to go on with you and Levy for ten minutes before well, me and Levy right. took over indoor adventures. Oh, sorry, Levy, outdoor adventures, and uh, <laughs> because Levy hasn't had either, but um, <laughs> but but um. And I remember you saying, and I said, how are you going? Because you were really sick at the time and you were really excited the fact that you were going to have a baby, but you were absolutely <laughs> filthy. You had to get off the drink for nine months. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Remember. Look, it was a sacrifice worth making, but oh, absolutely. I don't think it's any surprise or secret that I love a drink. Oh, I know. Um, so, look, it was, um, you know. Ooh, she's dropped out. Oh, the call's failed, so we'll just... Uh, We'll call Aaron back. The call has failed, so we'll uh, mm. we'll do that. We'll get Courtney to come around and fix that up for us. And, He's the exact um, producer. You yeah, know, well, we, I, obviously, I mean, she needs to get a route running with Telstra to get them to pay her phone bill. So we'll sort that out because <laughs> she is the best. So we'll just call her back. And good thing, let me say, good thing we've got Courtney here. So uh, we'll just uh, we'll see if we can get her back on. Now, Aaron. Hello. Right, okay. So just flick, can you just flick? Oh, what have we done? Ooh, we're right. We're all good. Okay, so give me that back. And, uh, so you're back with us now, Aaron. You're just, you know, with all a the better connection as well. You were cutting in and out a little bit. Oh, were we? Oh, sorry. I couldn't quite hear you. No, that's no, all right all then. Good. I was going to say, with all the rorts you've got running, surely you'd have one with Telstra. <laughs> <laughs> as I said before, I'm misrepresented. It's a facade that I have rorts. I'm just, look, I get sent some things sometimes to work from people who gift me things, so that's lovely. But in terms of rorts that I set up, you know, it's not my fault. You know, I'm obviously just, I'm, I'm easy to give things to on occasion. Yeah. And let me tell you, I could work it a lot more than I do. I really don't. Daryl is the king of the rort. Yes, I know. Daryl, the big man, Broman. He is, <laughs> he is good. I mean, I sort of helped him out a bit in the early days. With I got him a Lone Star card. Do you remember the Lone Star Steakhouse and Saloons? Oh, yes. Yeah, anyway. good. Was it almost like a sizzler, was it? Yeah, oh, no, 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 no. This was the <laughs> no. full deal. Like, mate, that steak's like bigger than him. Anyway, so <laughs> so I got him. I, I, I had him on, and as you know, I, I can pull a rot myself. So I, I, I got us all these Lone Star cards with unlimited credit on them. He was living at the one oh, near his place. <laughs> he was in there for breakfast. Yeah, I remember that. Dave had never been happier. He was never home. Oh, mate, he was happy. He was having... He was having Texas ribeyes for breakfast, so anyway. <laughs> so, so where are you? Well, that explains a lot. So, I mean, this—I mean, what you do for a job's fantastic, and I mean, you've done well. I mean, you were probably the first of the the girls that got into the footy, and in regards to the the commentary and being on television, I think you probably were the first, really, the first the, the first high profile one. We'll give you a wrap, but that was a lot of hard work for you, Aaron, wasn't it? That was it wouldn't have been easy to to break into that. Yeah, it was. It was a lot of hard work. And look, it's, um, I get really uncomfortable with kind of, you know, feeling like I was the first because there were so many incredible women who, you know, have done so many amazing things prior to me and, and did them, you know, in radio and in print and in television to a degree. But I guess when I came around, networks were more willing and were more, I guess, open to the possibility of having women involved in, you know, in the coverage of, of male dominated sports. And Look, not to not to take anything away from from I guess me and what I did because I, I worked bloody hard for it and I dedicated a lot of my life to to that opportunity. But I also, I think you know I'm under no misconception that there were other women prior to me that would have been just as capable, possibly even better. I mean, easily, possibly even better that you know would have done a great job had they been given an opportunity. So I was very lucky to get an opportunity, and it was, you know, it was wonderful. I, I started out in the Channel 9 newsroom and then got an opportunity on the Sunday footy show. And I remember Kenny calling me into his office, the great Kenny Sutcliffe, and asking me, you know, would I like to have a crack at it? And I was so excited. It was basically just doing a, a live cross out at, I think it was Cogra Oval, a, a preview of a Dragons game. And it was to the Sunday footy show with Sturlo, Joey and Freddie on the panel. And I was just absolutely chuffed. And then Kenny, of course, told me that, you know, 18 people had been asked prior to me and couldn't do it for whatever reason. So I was 19th down the list but I couldn't have cared less I tell you what that's one thing that I've always kind of 
been fairly good with is is not having an ego and you know I, I never have cared how my opportunities have come by and you know if I'm the tenth choice or the first choice it doesn't matter if I get an opportunity I'll do the best I can with it and I remember doing my cross and I was that's Johnny Johnny yes I was so nervous and I, I did it and I you know I'm very self-deprecating so I tell you if I kind of stuffed it but I nailed it and I just remember that feeling afterwards it was my first time ever doing live TV I'd never done anything live it had always been pre-recorded and I remember throwing back to the panel and Joey and Freddie joking and saying, oh, you know, we won't have a job anymore. And it was just, you know, it was a great start, a great opportunity. And that Sunday footy show, it's just so nuts and bolts footy and it's a real footy head show. So it was a great show to get my start on. And then a couple of years after that, the, the Thursday night show came along and that was amazing. I started out just doing a little segment, an injury update and report, a little segment on that show. And then from there, I was on the show for nearly eight years. It then kind of went into guest hosting and then, you know, I became a permanent host with Fat, And, you know, it was just amazing. People, Johnny, Johnny, yes, people always ask me kind of what was the most challenging or difficult part. And I think for me, you know, I always did a lot of work. I did, you know, a hell of a lot of prep because I needed to. I'm not a former legend. I can't talk about my own experiences or reminisce about the old days. I needed to know information and have facts. But the, the real challenge was building a relationship with my co-host because, you know, you, you might have seen Anchorman the movie and you can tell if people don't like the people that they're sitting next to and you can tell if they're not genuine relationships. And I knew that I was going to be at my best if I trusted the blokes on either side of me. And if I'm saying something, you know, if the camera kind of, you know, zooms over to them and they're rolling, their eyes are going, what the hell? You know, I, yeah. I knew that, that I wouldn't last a bloody month on the show. So I invested a lot of, as much time as I did in prep and in studying my notes in the game, I invested as much time into building relationships and friendships with Bo, with Fatty and with Big Man. And I think that was one of the kind of real, um, I guess, reasons behind the success we had for a few years there was just that we were great mates. You know, Fatty would call me three, four times a week. You know, I'd go on holidays with Big Man. Bo's still one of my best mates today. And it was just those relationships and those friendships that came across on air. And, you know, we had a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. But, you know, and, and for a long, long time that show was just brilliant and, and gave people, you know, a bit of respite on a Thursday night. But like all good things, my friend, and you look at the likes of the variety shows like Hey, Hey, It's Saturday and, you know, they, they have a shelf life and unfortunately I'd just taken it over when ours decided to end. Yeah, no, so, yes, that's right. And, yeah, and, and we won't go into the negatives, but you're unfairly... Um, yeah, you're unfairly targeted with all that, but we won't give them any ox oxygen. Oh, look, oxygen you, you know here. what, Jack? It's um, I guess constant exposure to stuff like mm. that, you know, has hardened me up incredibly. Mm. And I tell you what, I'm I'm a very different person now than I was even a couple of years ago. And mm. it's um, you oh really? Because I haven't seen you for a while, so you're probably a different <laughs> person now. I mean, I won't recognise you when I see you next then. No, I know. Who is this person? <laughs> I well, know we can see that. to make me look mature and professional. Mm. So oh, well, we'll see. <laughs> that they were cut out from if they were working on me, I can tell you. <laughs> but at least you know now you've appeared here. And let me tell you now, the shelf life on this program is very, very well, short, I can tell you. But anyway, I do. <laughs> we've had all the big I names on here. Don't come back. If you don't come back next week. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm in charge of it. Younger. Yeah, but I'm in charge of it. I'm in charge of it, Aaron. Me and the blue cattle dog. I mean, so, but I mean, it was a big oh, thing for you because as a as a as growing up, because for people that don't know, and you'd be living under a rock, that your dad's obviously Senator Jim Marlin and was was and was in the Defence Force and basically moved around a lot, which meant as a family, you all moved around. So that would have been interesting. How long were you in one place? And some of the places that you you did live, it would have been such an an education, an education you wouldn't have got at school. No, absolutely. It's, um, you know, I'm so, so incredibly proud of Dad and, and what he's done, you know, over his lifetime, not just in politics and a lot of people know him now just as a senator and, and you know, what he's done post his military career, but what he did in the military for over 40 years is just <laughs> phenomenal. And I, um, you know, I look back at my upbringing so fondly. It was, it was definitely challenging and, and particularly as you kind of get into your teenage years and you're moving around and changing schools and you know I went to 16 different schools so we were constantly moving constantly changing and you know it's tough when you leave friends and when you go to a new school and don't have any friends and you know I remember lunch times hiding in toilets or going to the library because I, I didn't have anyone to sit with and those kind of challenges at the time when you're that age are huge but you know it, it taught me very early on to be resilient it taught me to walk into a room and and essentially even if I wasn't comfortable to pretend to be comfortable and to handle a lot of different situations being thrown at me. It also taught me how to talk to people from all different walks of life. And 
I think one of the most kind of character defining postings that Dad had. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Was um was Indonesia. We were there on a couple of um on a couple of postings. We were there in '98 when Sahado fell, that regime that was in power for 30 odd years, and he was one of the most corrupt leaders, not only in, in Southeast Asia but I think the world has ever seen. And and all of a sudden, oh, you want me to open? Yeah, I'll take that, baby. All of a sudden, all of a sudden. You know, a country that had been ruled with nine fists and, you know, his children owned every major piece of infrastructure. It was just so corrupt. Decided, this country decided to stand up and fight for freedom and, and fight for a leader that they had, you know, they wanted to elect. And it was just incredible to watch that as a, as a 15, 16 year old and to see democracy in action and to see people fight. And I remember watching the news one night and it was, you know, I think government kind of regulated news and we'd driven through all these protests and the, the Trisakti University shootings where, you know, students were shot and, and our bus drove through there and to have that kind of, you know, occur and then watch the news and not see any of it. And I remember saying to mum, dad, why is it this on the news? And they said, well, this is corruption and this is, you know, mm-hmm. so it, it essentially opened my eyes to the power of, of people and freedom and this fight that, that they had over there and, you know, what we take for granted in Australia at a very young age. And I, I became obsessed with news and obsessed with, journalism and it wasn't I didn't think I'd I'd end up in sport I thought I'd probably more end up in politics or in foreign affairs but it it did kind of you know spark an interest in me that has stayed with me for a very long time and yeah it was a great upbringing dad was away a lot so he wasn't there a lot but mum was just you know mum's an incredible incredible woman and you know we owe all of our you know I've got a a sister who's a a high school teacher a head of, of department I've got a brother who's a pilot for Virgin well he was at the moment it's a little up in the air a sister who's a lawyer and a partner in a law firm and all of any success I'm the least successful in our family obviously mm, but any right. success that dad has had and that all of us kids have have, have had and, and been lucky enough to enjoy has been because of mum. She's just, you know, she's an incredible woman, very, very smart. And, yeah, it was a just it was just a great upbringing. It doesn't suit all people, and I know a lot of military families, kids who really struggled with that, but we all seem to have come out the other end somewhat normal, and I do say that with a bit of trepidation mm. because people who know me well know that I am so far from normal, it's not funny. But, no, it was, a, it was a great experience. And, I, you know, I speak another language, Indonesian, definitely not I, I was going to ask you that. I was going to say. Day did to you, day. I was actually going to ask you, can you speak some Indonesian? Can you just give us a bit of a sample of that? Absolutely. Besok pagi saya akan pergi ke toko dan mungkin susu itu akan minum mungkin susu, tetapi sekarang saya sedikit capek, mungkin akan tidur karena babi saya sedikit capek, ya. I agree totally. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I'll, I'll have two of those with some tomato sauce, thanks. You said your dad was away a lot, which obviously he was. You must have, I mean, honestly, I mean, were you worried about him? You would have been. You would have had to have lied at bed at night before you went to bed just worrying where he was and what was happening because, I mean, it's not the safest job in the world. No, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, mum was brilliant in that she sheltered us from a lot of that, which was great. But I think his last kind of posting, he was in Iraq for a year. Yes, sweetheart, you want to come here? He was in um, he was in Iraq for a year. So that was, you know, having to watch. What do you want, baby? Sit, sit, sit. There you go. She can sit with mama. Um, watching, you know, the news each night and seeing, you know, the horrific casualties of both you know, the Iraqi forces. Yeah, she's sitting, baby. And then to, you know, watch, you know, the death toll rise and the coalition forces was, was awful and was really tough and quite confronting. But, you know, I, I, I kind of, I just look at my situation now and, you know, my partner's in the police force and, you know, I've got one baby and I just think how mum did it for so many years with dad predominantly not there for so much of it with little bubbers and not only, you know, the challenge of raising, mum had three under three at one stage, but to, you know, to do it when they were a little bit older and, and to do it with dad not just away, but away in a war zone, you know. It's just, yeah, it was incredible. But, yeah, it was, it was absolutely that. I, I remember Iraq well and I remember, you know, being nervous every time there was a knock on the door or nervous every time the phone rang because, you know, communication wasn't constant. We, we couldn't talk to Dad a lot and, you know, he was doing ridiculous hours and, yeah, it, it was certainly, that, that was really quite confronting and, and really tough. But, you know... I've only ever known Dad as a soldier and they used to call him, um, we lived in Inogra when I was in year 11 and 12 and Dad was the brigadier at the Inogra Army Base and um, I'd kind of just discovered boys kind of and there were a couple of soldiers that, you know, we met out one night at a nightclub or a pub in Brisbane, I think Caxton Street or something like that and I remember them when we were talking and they realised that I was Dad's daughter, I remember one of them saying, oh, we call him Drugs Mullet and I was like... Drugs, Nolan. I'm going, Dad's never taken a drug in his life. But then they told me that it's because Dad made them double the pack march that they used to do. Like they, they had these things that they used to always do, but Dad would always be at the front 
and he'd never asked his soldiers to any to do anything that he wouldn't do. So, you know, all I've ever known is, is dad in that military role and, you know, dad's commitment to his job was, you know, was second to none. And so it's, you know, I've learned a lot from him. I, I think, you know, mm. not all these... You know, he's not perfect, but he's um, he's an incredible human being. Oh, he's a good bloke, and now he's in the politics, which is, I guess, a bit... What did right. you think of that? That's a big that's a big step because you're putting yourself out right out there for that. But but he's oh. no, they're lucky to have him, aren't they? I reckon, well, mate, personally, I think we're lucky to have oh. him. I mean, he's basically served his entire life. Oh, he really... And you know what? You kind of... You look at so many politicians out there, and look, I, I wouldn't, you know want to cast dispersions on anyone I think anyone who, who commits themselves and dedicates themselves to public life deserves our gratitude absolutely I just think some people are more equipped and, and qualified to give and to serve than others and you know there's a lot of career politicians out there and you know good luck to them absolutely what they still do is noble and they serve our community but to have someone with dad's experience who you know he ran the the first democratic election in Iraq during the war you know his experience in East Timor his experience you know commanding thousands of, of men and, you know, just, just generally, you know, the morality that he has and his his ethics and, you know, his commitment to the truth and to being honest. And Dad, you know, even, you know, I remember, like, even travelling to Indonesia and different things, Dad is just so, when it comes to being honest and when it comes to not, you know, not taking the mickey out of things. Like, I remember once they offered to upgrade us to business and Dad was like, no, no, this is not in the, you know, not what we get allocated. Oh, 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 hang on, I've got to cut you short there. I mean... <laughs> Fair dinkum. I mean, the old saying of the fruit doesn't fall far from from the tree does not apply here. <laughs> I mean, he was offered to be upgraded to business and he went, oh, no, 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 I'd, no. I'd not <laughs> to, to get to business to turn left on a plane, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and Roger Lindemann, who's not watching tonight, I very doubt it. But, I, I mean, if we, if we used to just hammer him on the phone to get upgraded to business. <laughs> I know. The amount of times I would just send Roger my ticket. Oh. And he'd be like, Oh, sorry, Rog, I, I accidentally sent it to the wrong person. Upgrade mm. me. For yeah. anyone who wonders, who wants to know who Roger Lindemann is, uh, he was a oh, guru yeah. at Virgin. And whenever you fly anywhere, the first thing you do is just look at... And, and I don't know about you, Aaron, but you, you run the old line. Look, it's no drama, it's no stress, you know. If you can help me, that'd be good. And, <laughs> yep, absolutely. Poor Roger. I'll tell you what, <laughs> Roger... Roger's full-time job was essentially looking after probably about 10 of us. I do feel from him. He probably had a job that Virgin actually paid him to do as well, but ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, poor old Roger. He's great bloke, oh. though. And he he'd always look... I, oh. I saw him at a supermarket actually about three months ago and the guys on the continuous call team haven't let me forget it. He walked past and looked at me and kind of... I didn't have my contacts in, by the way. Oh, hey, And he, uh, he waved and I kind of thought... You oh, brushed well, him. Well, I thought he was just a fan. <laughs> so I kind of, I waved back, yes, it's me. <laughs> yes, picking up some tuna. Uh, I kept walking and then I turned around and I was like, Roger. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm not at version anymore, so I was just brushed. <laughs> That's exactly I'm, what they thought. Uh, I tell you. I'm with you. I've, de- I've deleted his number as well, Erin. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm a pick and stick. Even when people can't do that much for me, I still give them a little bit of time. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's that's very kind of you. <laughs> Just on that, is there anyone that we should be mentioning tonight, Aaron? Like, like Eddie Brand. Yeah, have we got to plug anyone? <laughs> We're happy to do it. We've been, we've been well, into what's, it what's anyway. Your audience numbers. Oh, like, I don't know. We've got a few. Watch. We've got a lot of people watching and a lot of comments. Well, and oh, look, now I listen, I've got, people. as you know, this whole idea of what we do on a Friday night, Aaron, is because when, once everybody went into what they call lockdown. We decided that this this happens in the shed here at the bar just about every night of the week, right? Yeah. I mean, because no one was allowed out, no one was coming around, so I was just sitting here by myself with Blackie. So then I started to ring. So then I started to get on the drink and ring people, and then I thought, why don't we just stream it live on Facebook and turn it into a podcast? But Blackie wants to say hello to you, so I'm gonna. Oh, here she comes. Hang on, she won't be able to hear you. You can take. You can talk to Blackie. This is. I'll put you on last, so I won't hear, but you can. Here you go. Hello, Blackie. Hey, Erin, how are you going? I'm Camera's good, here. darling girl. How are you? Oh, well, very good, thanks. I miss your beautiful food. Was it fried <laughs> rice? What did we have that time that was amazing? Sausage rolls. Sausage rolls, yeah. I sent him some sausage oh, rolls yes. and some fried rice. How are you going in lockdown with old mate? Well, I'm still working, so <laughs> I'm really lucky at the moment. She's on the More front mercy. line, Erin. She works in the school, so she's on the front line. 
Oh, good on you. How's that going? Yeah, all pretty good. All the kids good. are back, aren't they, this Next week Monday. Next week? Yeah, next yeah. Monday they're all back. So, yeah, that should be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm kind of in two minds. Like, you know, I know the economy needs to get back into gear and I, I know that we need to get back Where to normality, like but I'm kind of suited to lockdown. You know, this kind of lifestyle is I don't do anything anyway. I just stay home all the time. So it's like us. I'm kind of a bit anxious about the real world coming back. It is. Like you go out shopping, you see another human being, you think, oh, my God, I there's know. a human being and you kind of take 10 steps backwards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's so it's, bizarre, isn't it, it? Is how bizarre. quickly we can just form new habits that feel normal and just, yeah, it's going to be bizarre. Are you right there, baby girl? Oh, my goodness, Eliza's grown so much. Can I show hi, you? Eliza. Eliza, can you, ooh, can you say hi, Blackie? Eliza. Hi, Eliza. Hey, Eliza, Eliza, where's Ho? Can you say... Ho's <laughs> 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 up in bed. <laughs> Can you believe that? So just for those who haven't seen my Instagram post, I got her a little um, bear just on the way out of Kmart. She picked it up, or Big W or something. She picked it up out of a, um, out of a container. And when I kind of – she looked at it and it's got like one of those little sleep bed hats that, you know, old people wear. And she said um, – and she looked at it and she goes, Ho! And I was like, oh, Emma. And I was like, no, 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 baby, Nino bear. Let's call it Nino bear. And she's going, ho, ho. And then I realised because the hat is like a Santa hat. So she's calling it ho. And anyway, so three, four times a night now, because she sleeps next to me, she screams out, ho, ho. And I have to wake up and get the bed. And now whenever we go shopping and there's someone wearing a beanie, she, she looks at them and points and goes, ho. I'm like, mate, horrendous. But she's going to get me in a fight. Hey, sweetheart, what's wrong? Emma, you want Emma? Isn't this Emma? Oh, no, that's Polly. Polly? <laughs> what do you want? Okay, mum, is mum going to have to put you down? I might have to um go and put child down. Is this a long session? <laughs> I'll just say one more thing before you go. What? Because I follow you on Instagram, and when I saw that about Ho, young Robert, he had a really bad speech problem. And we were out and about one day and he saw a gentleman who had a bit of a, a stomach. It was around Christmas time. He went up to him and he went, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw like, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it reminded me of. Yes, that was Oh, I love it. Sean's just put an Elsa hat on. So that's helping Eliza for, for in the interim. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Well, lots of love, Blackie. Likewise. You look amazing. You look so well. Thank you. So do you. Love the haircut. Oh, thank you. It's, yeah, it's more motherly, you. <laughs> you know, mature. <laughs> <laughs> no, it goes no. good. It's so oh, much good. easier. It really is. Well, take care. Thank you, my love. And we'll talk Great soon. To chat. Okay. Mwah. Thank you. See ya. Bye. See you, darling. See ya, bye. Bye, honey. All right, Erin. You got your hands full there. And- like the young bloke still says ho ho ho, if he points at me every year. He's eighteen now. He's almost nineteen. <laughs> Look, before we let you go, the footy's back next week. Are you wrapped? Yes. Oh, I really am. I really am. It's um, yeah, I'm pumped for it. I, I just hope that you know that kind of. It, it's interesting. I keep thinking, how will we come back to normality? And I know normal won't be what it was prior, but I just think, will we come back with a, a greater appreciation and a greater perspective on life and, you know, appreciating things that we might once have complained about and will people want to go to the footy more once they can go back and, you know, embrace things or will we come back and, you know, within a month totally forget everything and go back to our normal ways? It'll be interesting to see. But I'm so pumped. I can't believe the Canberra Raiders are favourites. That's um, that's very exciting alongside the Parramatta Eels. But, well, you're a fan, yeah. so mate, happy days. Oh, absolutely. But I just don't, I don't know, I don't think favouritism sits particularly well with us. And I, and I kind of, you know, I think last year was our shot. But, you know, there's so many. I was really, really happy with what I saw from Williams in his first game for us. I thought, you know, coming over from the Super League and playing in the halves, not a lot of backs have come over and done, you know, particularly, particularly well. So I kind of, you know, I was a little bit sceptical, but he was fantastic. His combination with Jack Whiten was amazing in those first couple of rounds. And, yes, we only played couple of teams that aren't, you know, superpowers. But, yeah, I think there's a lot to look forward to. I think the Roosters will have a bloody tough ass to go, you know, for a three-peat. I mean, God, their draw is particularly difficult, but they always lift, don't they? Trent Robinson's an incredible coach. So mm. I'm just so excited and I'm excited for something to look forward to, yeah. something to do on, you know, a Thursday, Friday night and, you know, throughout the weekend. I think it'll be it'll be fantastic. And I think Peter Volandis has just done us a surprise. Oh, mate, he's a legend. You know, you want him in your corner yeah, with you. you absolutely, he's battle. the best. I mean, yeah. obviously you are desperate for something to do for the fact that you've joined us here tonight. So, I mean, that's, there's <laughs> the honest, proof right there. I mean, normally I would be 
far too busy and important to, you know, spend time with you lot. But yeah. no, this is great. Honestly, if I wasn't, mind you, I'd probably be putting Eliza to bed now. But no, you guys are great. This has been great fun. And I, yeah. I'm, I'm so sorry I've got to kind of go now. Yeah, that's all right. Because we were going to get you, because we were telling people before you came on what a great singer you were. And we were going to get <laughs> oh, Wilco to, to we we're going to get Wilco to play a song and then, uh, and get you to sing with him. <laughs> You're okay, one of you the great want me, singing. Do you want to do that? We can do that. Quickly. Oh, what, are you got a request for Wilco? What, what request do you have? Let me think. Um, I'm trying to think what I could sing that might be semi. Oh, mean, you, oh, you are actually going to do it, are you? All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. I said I sounded like a cat in a blender. <laughs> a cat in a blender. I don't know how Talis knows what a cat in a blender sounds like, but the RSPCA needs to get onto that quick smart. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrifying. Um, what's, what's the song? I don't know. I don't I'm know. Old school. I don't know any new songs. Like I love Meatloaf. Billy Joel. What about any Aussie? Billy Joel. Aussie? Billy on. Joel. Oh, Let's okay. Do what do you want Let to me do? Take this off. Oh, you want to do? I can do piano, man. I got the oh, harp. I got the harmonicas here. You no. got to do it in D. No, in D. Yeah. Oh, mate, no. Are well. we doing piano, man? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Here we go. We'll turn you, you to... right up here, Aaron. So he's. I'm going to take these off. Yeah. So, so I'll just turn that off there. What about? Uh, what can about me here, done? Aaron? I'm direct. So what? Uh, what people can see watching this, they see both of us. Then they just see you and you're talking and. I'm well, direct. I'm, I've become. Death, I've become Cecil B. DeMille's the director. Plus, I'm pushing <laughs> the buttons, and uh, you wouldn't believe. After a few beers, Aaron, I actually sometimes push the wrong button. You wish oh, I couldn't imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, and, uh, all right. Well, the neighbours are ready over the fence to cheer on. So you're go- so Wilco's yeah. going to sing, and you got to remember, Aaron Wilco. Yeah. He was in Russell Crowe's band, Thirty Odd Foot of Grunts. Stop it! I love Russell Crowe. Right. Well, he was. He's very. Well, he lived with Russell for many years. Just get that wine into you, Aaron. That's a uh, what is that? Is that um... Dutch courage? Oh, can I tell you what? It's cask wine. Is, is it? Dawn and I have yeah, actually discovered cask wine, and we're quite we're quite big fans of it. It's actually quite nice. Oh, really? Yeah, no. Well, I'm a t- it's actually lovely. Just so I can hold this up in front of the camera, I'm a Tui's new fan. Oh, Two yeah, is new. Good if you're try. listening, Pipe yeah. Down, anyway, so all right, so you're going <laughs> to have a crack. So Wilco's going to play piano, man, yep, and you're going to sing great. along with him. So. Uh, here we go. Don't let me down, Wilco. On a Saturday, the regular crowd, the crowd shuffles, shuffles in. in. There's an old, There's man, an old man sitting, sitting next, next, to me, next to me, making love to making his, love his to tonic his and gin. <laughs> he says, son, can you son, play Mad Memory? I'm not really, I'm not really sure, sure how it goes, but it's sad and sweet and I knew it complete. When I'm a younger man's clothes, all yours, Aaron. La di da, da La da la di da, da da. Go the chorus. Go the chorus, Aaron. Sing us a song. Sing us a song tonight. Well, we're all in the mood for a melody. You got us feeling all. Oh, right. <laughs> oh that's, yeah, that's, that's you know, good job, bro. That's the na- yeah, that's the neighbours hanging over the fence. Now, Aaron, before I let you go, can you just give our little show a plug on Sunday when absolutely. you're on the continuous call team? <laughs> oh, absolutely, I will. I thought you were going to ask me to do it on the Sunday footy show, and I thought that's going to be a hard stretch. Oh, yeah, I know. I understand. Yeah, no, if you can slip a if Sunday you can slip Sunday. a sly mention in, I mean, obviously, I mean, well, you know. Continuous call team, we've got much lower standards. Yes, I understand. You'll get, you'll I, I get know. A big shout out. I used. To, I, I actually, it's funny. You know, I started on the continuous call team in two thousand and nine, doing I the know. great Aussie she, great Aussie shed competition, and here I am. I'm just back where I started. Back Isn't in the that shed. Amazing. It hey, is you, good. Say, Sean, say hi to Duck. Hi, Duck. Hey, Sean. How are you, mate? Good, mate. Thank you. I've got to say, <laughs> I just tell the story, Aaron, of Sean. Remember when we were in Jeringong? Yeah, and you were oh, really God. crook. You should never have come down, and you were really sick. And and you said, Sean, because Sean's a homicide police officer, the police officer in the homicide squad. And you said the things that he sees, but he didn't want to know me. <laughs> <I don't laughs> you remember that? Oh, he, good stuff. He he was a good man. He drove me because I said I can't let them down. Oh, you can't work. I said drive me. Oh, you look, mate. Fair dinkum. I mean, you look like I do on a Sunday. You know what I mean? Like I feel, I wake up and feel like I've had an autopsy. <laughs> yeah, mate. Story of my life. Oh, oh mate. All right. Okay, well, mate. Next darling, time we catch it. We loved. It'd be good to get you out here in the shed one night when the oh, footy's over and everything to have a barbie and all that. 
All right, right. well, uh, and so... If, and if, this, if I haven't put the mocker on you and this show continues past this week, let, we'll do it again and I'd love to. We'll, we'll sit in for a session. Yeah, absolutely. Come up and you can sit here and actually sing. We'll sub some mics and sing with yeah, Wilco yeah, while he's playing. That. How good yeah. would it be? Your, your viewership will go down, but that's all oh, right. Oh, no, you're right. You've added a bit of class to it because it's been fairly <laughs> ordinary over the last few weeks. <laughs> good on you, Aaron. Thanks very much. You're a good mate. Good on you. And, we'll, and uh, good luck next week. And the footy's back. And, uh, mate, you'll kill it. We'll see you, see you on the uh, footy show on Channel 9 on Sunday and then the continuous call team in the Arvo. Mate, you're a workaholic. You're on to it. Oh, no, look, I, I actually am very lucky. I've got a great ballad. So I feel like I'm a full-time mum and I feel like I'm a full-time worker as well. A lot of what I do is weekends and nights, so I'm very lucky. I'm, I've got a good employer. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Send that clip to them. Thank you. All Thanks, right. guys. Good on you, Erin. Thanks again, mate. There she is. Good on you, Erin. Go and put Eliza Welcome to bed. Up. Good on you. Thanks, mate. There she is. Thanks, See ya. And there she is, Erin Marlin. How good did she go? The crowd's gone off. Anyway, all very, very good. But, no, that was great to get uh, Erin on for a chat. And, oh, well, mate, I mean, she's had an interesting life. How Even growing up, you know. I mean, it's been, uh, you know, very... Um, back on, mate. Yeah, you can do that. Well, yeah, you can do that if you like. I'll just turn that off and uh, turn you back on there. That's a bit better. How's that? Yeah, that's t- she sang about 16 schools yeah. that she went to and in, uh, life in Indonesia when everything was going pear-shaped over there. That would have been... Very scary times. Oh, mate, absolutely. And, uh, mate, she certainly had an interesting life. And her dad's a really good bloke too. Like, he's yeah. a, a great bloke. And, look, and what about him? I mean, he set up the, the first, you know, elections in, the, in Iraq. Yeah, he was behind that. I mean, what a job that, that was. <laughs> mate, that's an amazing... How would you even start? Oh, mate, absolutely. We've got a few comments to go through. Michelle Rampling has sent one through. She must have saw you, saw you on here, love. She's gone, go, go, girl. So there you go. <laughs> so well done. Um, but there's a stack of um, a stack of uh, messages here. One from Feral Dave again. Hi, Aaron. Uh, James Glenn Denning. Hi, oh. hi Blackie. Um, another one from James Glenn Denning. Geez, he can send a message, James. He can't. He can. He's a. Hey, one from an old mate of mine, Freddie Johnson. You're looking good, Blackie. So there you go, and uh, it is all happening. And Glenn down at June, you mate. Let me tell you about Glenn in June. Yeah. You're right. He. You've heard of the Ray Warren statue? Absolutely. So anyway, it was yep. decided on the continuous call team many years ago that we are going to do this statue for Ray Warren. So I yep. was basically, Ray Hadley said to me, mate, we're going to need you to take charge of this. So behind the scenes, I was sort of making it all happen. It was a lot of, it was a lot of work. I mean, you just can't turn up to a park and put up a statue, right? So anyway, we needed a contact down there. So Glenn, our man in June, he was the contact. So good on you, Glenn. He's a, he's a good bloke, and uh, I reckon they should be doing a statue of you around here somewhere soon, mate. Yeah, oh, you're kidding, aren't you? I mean, fair the dish. duck statue. Oh yeah, yeah. It'd be like the fucking one of the Olgas out there in the Northern <laughs> Territory. I mean, you're fucking kidding. <laughs> anyway, but um, <laughs> that's gold. But no, but it was good. I mean, what a job that would have been for Aaron's dad to turn up. And amazing, do that, eh? anyway, just amazing, unbelievable. But anyway, we've still got plenty of people tuned in here. If you've got a question or you've got a, uh, you have a. Um, a request for Wilco. We can put him on the spot. Right. Um, mate, one here, Michelle says, Good day, Duck. I remember you from Birdsville. Well, well that's good. I was up there, and uh, which was pretty good. Jesse Irvine, play some music now, Duck. That must be you, Wilco, because you're oh. the one who plays the music, and we will do that. Um, there's, a, um, there's a stack of people asking us to play music. Um, there's a lot of people here. Get Wilco to sing. Uh, which is great. Donna Berg, gorgeous woman. There's a lot of great comments about Aaron here and all very positive and um, great to see that. A good mate of mine. Mate, remember I mentioned Penguin earlier? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, Penguin's watching. So good on you, Penguin. He obviously, someone must have rang me and said, the Ducks just mentioned you. Penguin, I didn't tell anybody how I gave you that <laughs> nickname. So there you go. Um, this is a, a lot of people saying that um, this is a great show. Mate, well, good on you. We really appreciate all of the... Um, all of the comments that we're getting here, your man Tim, the uh, Aaron, the, what's his name, Tim, the uh, trivia, trivia Timmy, trivia Timmy. Yeah, he's obviously still. Um, he oh. wants to know is Reggie filling up Aaron's glass? Well, it's a bit hard, Timmy. She's not here. I mean, she's at home. So, but uh, all very good. Plenty of people. Um, Do you reckon we send Reggie round there? Eh? No, no, no. Reggie's our man. All oh, right. Yeah. So, mate, what we'll do? But so for anyone, so when we talk about Reggie, when we talk about Reggie, we have to play this. <laughs>
And Reggie, there you go, son. And, uh, mate, he's doing a great right. job. Not only now, I've got, as you know, I've got a couple of mates here tonight. We've got Josh Peters, his young bloke, young Dougie Peters, and uh, I'll, I'll tell you a good story about Dougie in a minute, and mm. his other young bloke, Archie, right? So it, they're now using our man, Reggie. Hey? Well, mate, hold, he's getting hold, them hey. beers. I mean, they're just sitting hold around on. the fire while they've got Reggie getting them beers. Jesus. Is that right, Reggie? Well, I mean... <laughs> anyway, so Reggie's on the job. He's down there working around the uh, the fire now. And uh, what about he's already got a stain on that yellow tie? I mean, it's unbelievable. Oh. You're supposed to be getting the beers, not drinking them, Reggie. <laughs> no? I've got to tell you a story about young Dougie Peters. So we're yeah. on our way up the coast, right? So... We go to, I think it was a golf club or somewhere for tea, a whole heap of us anyway. Dougie says, Dougie says, oh, Duck, you know, I'm one of your biggest fans. And, uh, you know, I think you're a legend. Look at, him, look at him, look at him. How old are you, Dougie? Come around here, Dougie. Anyway, so you're 12. Oh, mate, what, in a few years? You're kidding, are you? You want something to stand on? So just look over the bar there. There you are, you're on the camera. You wave. You're on now. Look, so wave to your fans. Okay, you can go now. Right? So anyway, so Dougie, so now you know what I'm talking about, right? So Dougie gets a yeah. self. We get a selfie. He then sends me a, the photo with a text message that says, what's the go with old mate in the background? And I looked at the photo and I couldn't stop. What are you talking about? So then I was, you know, you zoom the yeah, photo yeah, yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. And here's this bloke with the shittiest look on his face way back at the back of the room. He's obviously thinking about somebody else. Yeah. Uh, but, mate, it was hilarious. But anyway, me and Dougie, I've, I've been educating Dougie on a – on a few things. Like when you talk to Dougie, he's one of those blokes, like he's, he just said he's 12, I think he's tossing it up. But when you talk to Dougie, when he's sick of listening to you, he just goes, mate, just move on. Do you, Dougie? So, yeah, that's what he says. He goes, no, yeah. mate, I can't, I can't put up with any more. I had a gut for that. No, no, he says, no. he goes like this, he just says, enough nonsense, away with you. Oh. Yeah, so anyway, he's a good man. All right, I reckon you've got another tune in your wheel, wheel car. Yeah, we can do one more. We can do that, so what we'll do, oh, mate, we're doing more than one more. So we'll do a couple more nah. and then we'll get out. So, all right, well, why don't we... Mate, fair dinkum. I mean, mate, you, I mean, you can pay plenty. All right, so I'll just turn that off. Turn your headsets oh, yeah. off and we'll turn your microphone back on. Lovely, mate. Just give us something, mate, and then we'll um, we'll do one or two and then we'll give it a rest for the night. Only because it was raining today and I was trying to do some stuff out in the backyard. Will this one come out? in that one. <laughs> oh, mate, fair dinkum. <laughs> There's nothing worse. Oh, Jesus. All right, why don't you give us one more, something a bit, oh. um, and then we'll go. Medic. Medic. A medic? <laughs> You're kidding. 
Oh, All right, one more from Wilco, and then uh, we'll get out of here. This is one. Uh, well, actually, we're not going anywhere. We're going over that fire where I just yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. And if you're wondering where I'm going, when I get up while you're playing, I'm going over near the fire and talking to the boys. Yeah, I know. I can yeah. hear you. Yeah. I'm oh. trying to sing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, all good. Okay. No, bloody brilliant, mate. Here we go. In the shed bar on the Friday night here. One day I'm going to find a way to change now. Find a better day now. I'll be talking to you. One day I know it'll be okay now. Ain't going to rain now. One of these days. What if I get there and there's no one there? Oh no, no, no. And if you call my name, you don't feel the same. Medic! Oh no. Cramp! Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. One day I'm gonna find a way to change now. Find a better day now I'll be talking to you One day I know it'll be okay now It ain't gonna rain now One of these days You don't know how it feels When I'm lonely In my dreams See, you're my own yeah, yeah. One day I'm gonna find a way to change Yeah Listen, I've had a, uh, a request for you, not for the play now, but, mate, I've had a request from the Brooklyn Hotel. The Brooklyn Hotel. Yeah, so a good mate of mine has been... I've, it's funny, you know, I've got two mates watching tonight who really? I've been mates with for over 100 years when you combine the two of them. Right. Right, one of them for 50... How old am I, love? I'm 56 soon. <laughs> Eight. Talk about let yourself go. But anyway, so one one of them's been a mate for 52 years and the other's been basically roughly the same. Yeah, right. So uh, Greg Brown, who tunes in every week. But anyway, Ray James, is one of, he was basically the unofficial mayor of Brooklyn. Uh, it's a good spot down uh, there. Oh, a great spot there for Love people it. listening around. And we've got people listening to us from everywhere. I'm getting messages here from Perth and wow. Adelaide and the Northern Territory and up in North Queensland wow, as well. Fantastic. We thank everybody for tuning in. But um, I've got to tell you that uh, Ray, Brooklyn, for people that don't know, is just north of Sydney. It's like a sleepy mm. little fishing village, a great town. Great spot. And right. a real good pub, the Angler's Rest. Oh, it's a cracker. Yeah, well, mate, yeah. well, mate Ray's got a lot of pool there, which he would do. He would have spent thousands there over the years. <laughs> so uh, as soon as you can, we can have entertainment back in pubs, he's yeah. going to get you a gig up there. Oh, fantastic. So, you, Ray. Uh, he'll be looking for a gig too, Ray. Don't worry yeah. about that. <laughs> he's eating the dates off the calendar at the moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, like everyone is. And, mate, not only that, if they want a fa- listen, I've got re- I've got questions here, Reggie. Are you available for barbecues, parties, hens nights? Aha! Hang on, oh. here's Reggie. Imagine hens. Imagine here's, here's, this would be Reggie walking into a hens night. <laughs> No, no, Reggie, mate, don't no speak, please. Just get beers when we want them. Anyway, so uh, if, if we wanted you for your conversation, mate, you'd have headphones on. So anyway, <laughs> we're hard on the staff here, as you can see. <laughs> oh, you're hard, he's a good man. man. And look, what people he's don't realise, he's got the suit on, as we mentioned earlier, the suit mm. has come straight off the rack at the Salvation Army store. Mm. and he's got, But he's got joggers on. Mm. And he, what are they? I mean, what, what are those joggers you've got on, Reggie? They look like... An old pair, of, look like an old pair of tigers or something. What are they? Hey? 
Oh, they're from Big W, aren't they? No names. No names. No names. You're going to be Big Reggie because you're going to be here every week from now on doing this. So, um, And I've had some people ask if you do have your RSA, whatever that is. Oh, yeah, he's got it. Yeah. I've got that as well. Oh, yeah, we've all got it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you have that, Reggie? Yeah, RSA? I know you've got RSI. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so... <laughs> He's pulling it out. Yeah, he's got it. And he's getting out, he's getting out his wallet as well. <laughs> so, there, no, he's, oh, there it is. He's waving it in front of the camera. So he does have that. Um, Wilco, again, thanks for coming uh, around. It was by a popular request. We might get you around every Friday now my because my it's great to have mate. a bit of entertainment. That's a bit of People fun, do love fun. it. And, uh, and you're not doing anything else at the moment. No. You're not playing any pubs or anywhere. And there's not much doing in the well, thing. Reggie, the I know we've had a bit of fun, Reggie, but thanks very much for coming around. And you want to come and wave to your fans? What, oh, come around you wave to, I'll just move over a bit because we've got social distancing, yeah, yeah, right? right? So, yeah. Reggie, over you go. There you go. Wave to your fans. And there's your tune. Hello, Angler's Rest. Angler's Rest, yeah. You just oh, imagine yeah. that. So, what we'll do to the Angler's Rest, when oh, we yeah. send Wilco up to the Angler's Rest, yeah. we will um, we'll send, we'll Reggie, we'll send Reggie up there to work behind the bar. He's done a great yeah. job. He's in training here right now. And let me tell you, he's flat out because uh, oh, now the boys, the Peters boys, my mate Josh Peters, and uh, his boys, Dougie and Archie, have been working him hard tonight, getting their beers. To everyone who's tuned in, thanks very much for doing that tonight. It's been fantastic. Wilco, thanks it's again, mate. Uh, my absolute pleasure, Doug. Love it. Anyway, so it's been it's been a pretty big night. Yeah, that is the Shed Podcast for tonight. A big thank you to my mate Aaron Molan for turning, um, for knocking off work on Channel 9 and going home. And uh, she sent me a text, I'm ready, duck. And uh, we got her on. So a big thanks to Aaron for joining us on the show tonight. For everyone that's tuned in and all the comments, thanks for that. Don't forget, you can certainly email us through the week. Bluecollarmedia.com.au is the uh, email address and click contact. And, uh, and we will respond to those emails. Really appreciate the support. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back to do it all again next week. We'll see you then.